Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call the October 17th, 2017 Pocosin City School Board meeting to order. Mr. Brown. Stanton will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Ethan is an eighth grade student at Pocosin Middle School. Ethan is the kicker for the JV football team, and he also enjoys playing soccer and is a member of the Legacy Travel Team. Please stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation. Inspirational reader is Libby Harper. She will provide the inspirational reading. Libby is a seventh grade student at Pocosa Middle School. She is a member of the Student Council Association. Libby's hobbies include surfing, playing field hockey, and basketball. The passage that I'm reading you today is called The Starfish Thrower by Lauren Easley. One day a man was walking down the beach when he noticed a young boy hurriedly picking up and gently throwing things into the ocean. Approaching the boy, he asked, Young man, what are you doing? The boy replied, Throwing starfish back into the ocean. The surf is up and the tide is going out. If I don't throw them back, they'll die. The man laughed to himself and said, Don't you realize there are miles and miles of beach and hundreds of starfish? You can't make any difference. After listening pol politely, the boy bent down, picked up another starfish and threw it into the surf. Then, surf, then smiling at the man, he said, but I just made a difference to that one. Libby, that's one of my favorites. Great job. Good choice. Ms. Sheeler, could you introduce the student presentation tonight, please? Yes, uh, recently students in Mrs. Blackstock's seventh period U.S. history class participated in a mystery hangout. Students used their mastery of geographical analysis skills to communicate with students from another classroom somewhere in the United States. Critical thinking skills, organizational effort, and collabor collaboration within our class allowed students to work productively to emerge as the winners of this fast-paced challenge. The students are Heather Charktabian, Taylor Jones, Aiden Young, Angela Gilmartin, and Lucas Ratcliffe. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, members of the school board, Dr. Parrish, family and guests. This evening, we will be presenting an activity we recently did in Ms. Blackstock's sixth grade history class. Our presenters this evening are Taylor Jones, Lucas Ratliff, Angela Gilmartin, Aidan Young, and Heather Charktavian. We began the year learning about geography of the U.S. We did lots of activities learning more about the continents and oceans, <clears throat> latitude and longitude, major bodies of water, and the regions across the country. As an ending activity, we put our skills to good use in an activity called Mystery Hangout. What's a Mystery Hangout? Think of Mystery Hangout as a modern day battleship game with a twist of technology. In this activity, we Skyped with another school that was located somewhere in the U.S., but we didn't know where because they, that was for us to find out. We Skyped with this mystery classroom asking questions we created to help us pinpoint that school's location before they found out ours. Each school took turns asking questions and the only replies that were given were either yes or no answers. Some of the questions we asked were, does your state border Canada? Are you east of the Mississippi River? And does your state border the Atlantic Ocean? Oh yes, and here's a clip from our activity. Okay. 
see you today. Hi, I'm Heather, and this is my class. We then analyzed the results and wrote new questions as the information came in. Success in this game requires strong map skills, cooperation, and above all, communication. We used large classroom maps and Chromebooks for quick research. Some of us worked in individually and others worked in pairs. Here are a few pictures from our activity. Here is one of our classmates, Blaine, thinking about what states to X out since the answers came in from our questions. This is two of our classmates, Colton and Blaine, Xing out some of the states. Can you guess which school solved the mystery first? We did! <laughs> the challenge this activity presented and with our successful map and geography skills we were able to figure out that our mystery hangout was a seventh grade class in Long Island New York who says geography isn't interesting <laughs> a very special thank you to our wonderful IT team at PMS for coordinating this activity for our class and providing their support Miss Kim Montavo and Miss Jennifer Canella We'd also like to extend our thanks to Miss Sissy Everett for taking the pictures we used this evening. Great job, everyone. Guys, we're going to have a couple of items on the agenda where we're honoring a couple of people. So if you could stay and your parents could stay just for another couple of minutes, and then we're going to take a break where we'd like to congratulate you and also then you could leave at that moment if you'd like to or you're welcome to stay after our break also. Dr. Parrish, do we have any additions or modifications to the agenda? We did add a recognition to the agenda this evening because our student was able to attend this evening and you have those new revised agendas at your seat right now with the senior of the month. We're able great. Well, that's a great segue to move on to recognitions. Yes, and it is... Um, my pleasure to be able to recognize this evening our October Senior of the Month. So would Summer Brown please come forward. <laughs> Summer is the High School October Student of the Month. She shows excellent pride in her school and community. She has an outstanding work ethic and has proven this through her grades and her ability to manage her time between school, sports, and leadership positions. 
summer has an outstanding resume to include being a camp volunteer at Sports Galore and More, field hockey clinic volunteer. She's helped children aged 6 through 13 learn fundamental field hockey skills for Pocosum Parks and Rec. She helps to renovate homes in Lee County, Virginia, and she has participated in many school-wide and community-wide service projects. She is the SCA class representative, National Honor Society historian, key club president, field hockey captain, is a member of the Spanish Honor Society, Mu Alpha Theta Society, received the National Spanish Exam Honorable Mention, and has received Student of the Year Award for World Geography. Summer is applying to the University of North Carolina, the University of Virginia, University of South Carolina and Virginia Tech, and plans to major in either business or pre-med and minor in Spanish. Please join me in congratulating Summer Brown for being our Senior of the Month. And Summer was actually also voted homecoming queen, and we saw her receive that Friday night. Next, we'd like to um, recommend a group of students. Um, these students are being recognized for the National Merit Scholarship um, Program, which is recon recognizes certain students, students for their high scores on the PSAT National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Test, Outstanding Achievement, and Exceptional Academic Promise. A selected number of students who achieve the top scores in their state are named semifinalists, and those who achieve slightly lower scores are named commended students. Percocin High School has three commended students. I'd like to first ask Christy O'Day to come forward. Christy is a senior at Percocin High School. She is vice president of Key Club, vice president of Spanish Honor Society, president of National Honor Society, a member of the Spanish Club, Model UN, Mu Alpha Theta, and Tri, Tri M Music Honor Society. Christy is an outstanding musician, participating in Senior Regional Orchestra, All District Band, All State Band, Williamsburg Youth Orchestra, and is drum major for the Pocosin High School Islander Marching Band. She hopes to attend UVA, Duke, or Johns Hopkins to major in chemistry, go to medical school, and pursue a career in dermatology. Please join me in congratulating Christy on being a National Merit Commended Student. <laughs> Noah Dunn, if you please come forward. Noah, also a senior at Pocosin High School. He attends Governor School for Science and Technology and is the Student Advisory Board Secretary there. Noah is, is the Science Honor Society President, National Honor Society Vice President, Model United Nations Treasurer, a member on the varsity basketball and tennis teams. He plans to major in engineering and has applied to Stanford, Vanderbilt, Princeton, UVA, and Florida. Please join me in congratulating Noah for this recognition. And next, Jacob Lewis. <laughs> Jacob, also a senior at Pocosin High School. He's a member of Academic Challenge, Model UN, National Honor Society, Mu Alpha Theta, German Honor Society. Jacob is an active volunteer for Vacation Bible School, Camp Invention, and the Church Nursery. He's an AP Scholar with Distinction and an AP Physics Student of the Year. Jacob plans to major in computer science at George Mason University, UVA, or Washington and Lee. Please join me in congratulating Jacob for this accomplishment. <laughs> Congratulations. Next, we would like to recognize um, two teachers. Unfortunately, one of our teachers is unable to attend this evening. Um, Michelle Henderson is not with us, but we would like to ask Michael Smith to come forward, please. Mr. Smith and Ms. Henderson received the 2016-17 Gold Star Award from WISE, Working in Support of Education. To be considered for the Gold Star Award, a teacher must achieve a 93% pass rate in at least one of their classes on the WISE Financial Literacy Certification Test. Two of our economics and personal finance chief teachers achieved this impressive goal and are awarded the Gold Star Award. Please join me in congratulating both Mr. Smith and Mrs. Henderson.
I would actually ask if Mr. Smith could come forward and if Dr. Sayak could, could come forward and if Dr. Sophus is here. I don't know if he's here. Okay. As part of our um, economics and personal finance program at PHS, students all take the WISE Financial Literacy Certification Test. It is my pleasure to announce that Percocin High School received the Blue Star designation from WISE for the 2016-17 academic year. Congratulations. A A school testing more than 10 students must have achieved an 80% passing rate on the financial literacy certification test and have either a majority of students on a given grade level take the test or have the students who took it achieve an average score of 85% or higher. This is no small feat. So again, please join me in congratulating our Procosan High School students and staff for this outstanding achievement and sincere thanks for your tremendous hard work in helping to improve the financial literacy of our community's young people. So congratulations again. Wow, great stuff. Mr. Smith, can you come up again? I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're going to take a break.
All right, we'll get started again. We'll move on to a few presentations and reports. Uh, Ms. Woodruff, could you come forward and give the financial update, please? Good evening, Chairman Cass, members of the school board, and Dr. Parrish. For the finance report this evening, I want to re review the Impact Aid program with you. Impact Aid is one of the federal funding sources, including in our budget. And since we have some new board members this year, I thought I'd take a few minutes to go into a little bit more detail. Impact Aid is a U.S. Department of Education program that provides financial assistance to local school divisions to compensate for lost local revenue due to tax-exempt federal property or increased expenditures for federally connected children. PCPS receives basic support payments and payments for children with disabilities for federally connected um, students, which are students whose parents or legal guardians are either active duty military, employed by the federal government, or work on federal property. <coughs> this can include persons employed by a contractor, subcontractor, or other private business. To be eligible for this funding, a school division must educate at least 400 federally connected children, or they must make up at least 3% of the school division's totally average daily attendance. Based on last year's survey, PCPS had 555 federally connected students, which was about 27% of our total enrollment. Impact aid funding is distributed based on a percentage of a school division's federally connected population. This funding becomes part of the general operating budget and supports instructional activities for all students. We are required to compile the information and report annually by January to support the following fiscal year's funding. In order to determine eligibility based on the number of federally connected students enrolled in our schools, an annual impact aid survey form is sent home. And this year, the form will be sent home with each student tomorrow October 18th, um, and the impact aid does require that a separate form be completed for each student. So parents who have multiple children, you're going to receive a form for each child. And this form should be completed and returned to your school as soon as possible, but no later than October 25th. And we really appreciate everyone taking the time to complete these forms to assist in our efforts to co collect this federal funding for our school. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Ms. Woodruff. Do we have any questions, comments? <clears throat> and thank you for doing that even for old board members. Appreciate it. <laughs> Mr. Pappas, would you come forward with an operations update, please? Good evening, Chairman Cass, School Board, Dr. Parrish. The operations report tonight will start out with food service. On September 29th, uh, the Feed Virginia Day of Action took place, and approximately 300 organizations across the state of Virginia took, play, took part in that event. The goal was to raise awareness of organizations that are working to increase access to food and encourage Virginians to get involved with the fight against hunger. All of the students at Pocosin Primary and Pocosin Elementary School participated, we delivered complete breakfast, bag breakfasts to every student. They selected the milk of their choice, and there were smiles, and everyone seemed to enjoy the event. In your packet tonight, you received a first reading for adapting the current local wellness policy to better align with the new requirements associated with the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act of 2010. In compliance with federal government regulations, free and reduced meal benefits that were extended to students in the previous academic year, 2016-17, automatically continue for the first 30 days of school <coughs> this year. Monday, October 16th was the last day for this automatic extension. While the grace period has concluded, families may apply for benefits at any time during the school year. PCPS received notification that it was awarded $46,779 as part of the security grant. We will use those funds to offer increased points of access into our schools using the badge system, as well as provide additional camera points. A statewide earthquake drill is scheduled for tomorrow, 
October 19th, which would be 1019, the drill actually starts at 1019 on 1019. PCPS schools participates in the earthquake preparedness as well as tornado and other drills throughout the year. PES will also be conducting bus evacuation drill tomorrow morning at PES, at which point all schools will have completed this requirement for the fall. That concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Pappas. Any questions or comments? Um, how do families apply for the something that's found online? Do they have to go to their school principal's office? You can go to our website, and there's an application form available there. It's available at the food service office. Anybody in any of our schools will be glad to facilitate that for a parent. Great. Thank you. Why not 1018? on 1018. It could have been, but uh, 1019 was selected. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Dr. Fox, could we have your instructional update, please? Good evening, Chairman Cast, Vice Chair Whitaker, members of the board, and Dr. Parrish. My instructional update this evening continues our fall data review to include graduation and dropout rates, diploma types, and an overview of AP and SAT data. So on the graduation, on time graduation rates reflect the number of students who completed high school in four years. Pocosin High School has an on time graduation rate of 94.7% for the 2016-17 school year. This is above the state on time graduation rate of 91.1%. This is an increase from 2016, where the on-time graduation rate was a 92.4. Our dropout rate this year was a 1.6%, which is a decrease from 2016, where the dropout rate was 2.1%. For the class of 2017, 70% of our students earned an advanced studies diploma and 24% earned a standard diploma. Both of these exceed the percentage of students across the state who earned advanced or standard diplomas. An advanced diploma is earned by a student who gets 26 course credits and passes nine SOL tests in the area of English, math, science, and social studies. Standard diploma is awarded to a student earning 22 credits and passing six SOL tests in English, math, science, and social studies. In the area of advanced placement tests in 2016-2017, Pocosin High School students took 23 different AP courses and completed 272 AP exams. These AP courses were taught at Pocosin High School, the Governor's School, or through the Virtual Virginia program. The courses are weighted, they're college level courses, the students select entry into those courses, and students can choose whether or not they take the assessment. Of those exams that were given last year, Pocosin High School had 80% of the students scoring a three or higher on that um, AP exam. Can, scores range from a one to a five. At the state level, this percentage was a 66%, and globally it was 64%. Our students continue to outpace their counterparts at the state and the global level on AP exams. And I hope that you can see this slide. It's a little bit busy because if you recall last year, there was a change in the SAT format. So what we've tried to do is show you um, this year's data, but it's not really comparable to last year's data because it's a different test. So what you'll see here is that the 2017 data represents the new SAT test, which was given beginning of March of 2016. This assessment made the writing portion optional for students with the evidence-based reading and writing portion and math portions required for all students. Students could score between a 400 and a 1600 on the new SAT. The data from 2016 represents um, the old SAT assessment, which included a, a required writing, critical reading, and math portions. Students could score between a 600 and a 2400 on that version of the test. So while we can't make comparisons between the two years, we can see that we're still scoring above the state and the national averages on our SAT tests for this past year. So this concludes my presentation this evening. Thank you, Dr. Fox. Any questions or comments? And can I ask a question about the, it's on-time graduation rate. 
we still have folks who go on to graduate through GED or other options included in that small percentage that we have not graduating on time. Yes, that's correct. And some of those students may graduate. We also have a five-year and a six-year graduation rate. So some of those might be um, students with special needs who can graduate in six years. Thank you very much. All right, we're going to move on to public comment. And tonight we do have with us um, Terry Schombach from 2 Cherokee Drive. And... Terry, please come forward. We're glad you're here tonight. Do you want me here, there? You're right there. Is perfect. And, um, I don't have copies of everyone, but I don't have copies of everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so let me just start out by saying I really don't have any personal issues with, issues with the board. However, over the past six years, we have had some issues throughout um, with students, staff, and some of the educators at Pocosin High School. Um, we have lived here for over six years, and I will say I've made a lot of friends throughout the community, and I've appreciated everything. My mother died while we were here, and we don't have family here, so it's been great. But the bullying issue at Pocosin, just in general, Pocosin, not only the schools, the community is just kind of appalling to me as a parent. Um, I'm not usually a parent that stands up, but in this case I am. I am going to actually stand up and I feel that, that these things need to be said on behalf of parents, on behalf of students, and things like that. And I realize that part of growing up is learning to deal with bullies. We got that. But when it affects those that you love and your children, and you hear the stories, it's, it just makes you question what's going on. Um, over the past six months, I've been listening to stories that are happening within our schools and our communities. Even as of last year and well into this school year, the bullying has not only escalated, but has also been ignored. It's as if it's being brushed under a rug and even denied that it exists in our community. I've learned what the truth is. I've learned what lies are and I've learned what's hidden behind the high school walls. In fact, before I was coming over here, I questioned and I prayed about it deeply and I said, should I do this? And I asked my child, as well as another child, should I do this? And the, the, it came back on my phone today and it said, I still want someone to speak. I'm tired of being called all these names. I need people to know what's happening. I'm not going to read every single one of these because it is heart-wrenching to hear some of the things that are happening, but just my own child alone has screamed out and cried and acted out in anger and now is in counseling because he doesn't want to go to school anymore. And this is his last year of school. How can you do this to a senior? Um, you know, it's supposed to be your best year. You're supposed to remember these students. Of course, we all, as I tell him, you know, you look at them and you say, okay, I'm going to stay in touch with you. I'm not going to stay in touch with you. I do it even now. I come from a small town just like Pocosin. I was bullied. I did things I'm not proud of, but you know what? I made it. I graduated, went to college, got my master's, and went on. And I want to see that happen to these kids. I don't want them bullied. We've had suicides in the community. We've had attempted suicides in the community. We've had murders in the community and sexual assault, and it needs to be addressed. And these kids need to be protected. I'm not going to, like I said, read all the details, but I have done my own research. I pulled up the general, the general attorney's website, and it specifically says that we are to protect the victims. I mean, these kids are victims. It doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter if they're rich, poor, whatever they are, but they need to be protected. And that's where we need your help. And I'm asking you guys to please help these kids, protect them, because they need it. Thank you. John Bach, thank you for coming out tonight. And I, I, I believe I understand that Dr. Parrish was able to speak to you before the yes. meeting and that you are going to set something up that, yeah, that you gonna, can talk I, further with her. I have no her. problem with that at all, absolutely. Great. And I don't mind talking. I just. I am also honestly in fear of retaliation against me and my child. 
So. Thank you very Thank much you. for standing up tonight. Right. Let's move along to the consent. I'm sorry. Do we have any more public comment? But thank you. We'll move to the consent agenda. Uh, Vice Chairman Whitaker, could you lead us? Absolutely. There were six items on the consent agenda. All of them are enclosed in the board's agenda that is available online prior to the meeting so that anyone can review them. These items are approval of minutes of September's regular meeting session, approval of minutes of closed meeting held on October 5th, 2017, approval of financial <coughs> reports, approval of personnel action, authorization to change appropriation and to accept and expend funds in accordance with the attached request, and authorization to dispose of surplus property. Thank you. Do we have um, a motion for approval? Second. Second. Thank you. Ms. Reimers. Mosteller? Aye. Ms. Hessel? Aye. Ms. Sheeler? Aye. Vice Chair Whitaker? Aye. Chairman? Aye. Motion passes 5 0. Thank you. Moving on to other matters. Consideration of approval of a proclamation for School Psychology Week. And I'm going to read a little bit of this proclamation. It's so important. Whereas all children and youth can learn with the proper support and have the inalienable right to an education that meets their needs. Whereas sound psychological principles are integral to instruction and learning, social and emotional development, prevention and early intervention, and supporting culturally <coughs> diverse student populations. Whereas children's mental health and resilience are directly linked to their learning and development. Whereas school psychologists facilitate collaboration and help parents and educators identify and reduce risk factors, promote protective factors, create effective caring schools, access needed community resources, and implement research-driven prevention and intervention strategies. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed on this 17th day of October in the year 2017 by the School Board of the City of Pocosin that the week of November 13th through the 17th be hereby celebrated as School Psychologist Awareness Week in all Pocosin City Public Schools. Do we have a motion to approve the proclamation for School Psychology Week? So moved. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Primers? Ms. Steller? Aye. Ms. Hessel? Aye. Ms. Sheeler? Aye. Vice Chairman Whitaker? Aye. Chairman Cass? Aye. Motion passes 5 0. Thank you very much. Moving on to consideration approval of Title IV Part A Student Support and Academic Enrichment Grant, Dr. Parrish. Yes, this is actually a new grant. Um, that's come forward as part of the Every Child Succeeds Act, or ESSA. Um, and it does provide us with $10,000 is what we're anticipating that we'll get for it. And it's used for student support and academic enrichment. So we'll definitely use that in part for professional development. What I do want to say to you all is that while we're getting $10,000 with this new grant in your reading file, we did highlight that we're losing just over $17,000 because of reductions to Title I, um, the Title I grant as, as well as another grant. So it's nice that we're getting the additional $10,000, but we're actually losing federal dollars in other grant areas. So I just wanted to make sure that was clear. But with all that said, I recommend approval of the um, Title IV Part A grant this evening. Thank you very much. Do we have a motion for approval? Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Do we have any questions or comments? Ms. Reimers. I guess I better abstain. I've just walked back in the room. Sorry. Aye. Ms. Mosteller? Aye. Ms. Hessel? Aye. Ms. Sheeler? Aye. Vice Chair Whitaker? Aye. Chairman Cass? Aye. Motion passes 5 1 abstention. Item C, consideration of approval of first reading of changes to policy 7.5-7-5.11 local school wellness policy. Dr. Parrish. Yes, um, as part of the um, uh, recent or new child nutrition and special supplementary nutrition program, 
and et cetera, reauthorization. Um, we now need to, as required by the federal government, to update our wellness policy. So we need we, what we're doing is going to update the, pol the actual school board policy, but that will also draft a new superintendent's regulation to provide guidelines and more detail behind the wellness policy, as well as we'll be developing a wellness plan that will have measurable um, objectives for us. All of this will meet um, the federal requirements that um, we have placed on us tied to the changes um, that are occurring for us. So what we're bringing to you this evening is the first reading of changes to policy 7-5.11. So you'll see we've really <coughs> dropped in a new um, wellness policy and pretty much pulled out the rest of it so that it aligns with what our new requirements are. But I want you to know while the policy itself is shorter, the guidelines will actually be more extensive. And by doing that too, as we get new um, information um, as to what we need to include in the wellness program, we can more easily do that the next day when we get to guidelines versus policy changes that take two months, So, um, because we have to get through first and second reading. So with that said, um, I'm recommending approval of first reading, and then we would move to second reading in November at our meeting, the change to policy manual 7-5.11. Thank you very much. Do we have a motion for approval of the first reading? Thank you. A second? Thank you very much. Do we have any questions or comments? Ms. Reimers. Mr. Holcomb. Aye. Ms. Mosteller. Aye. Ms. Hessel. Aye. Ms. Miller. Aye. Vice Chair Whitaker. Aye. Chairman Cass. Aye. Motion passes 6 0. Okay. Thank you very much. Dr. Parrish, can you kick off communication, please? Yes, I do want to thank Ms. Schombach, I hope I pronounced your name right, for coming this evening. Look forward to talking to her in the coming days. Um, I also just wanted to remind those at home that we um, will be doing another presentation about school consolidation and information that the board requested, and we'll be doing that as part of the work session, and that part of the work session will be on camera, so you can stay tuned if you're at home watching this. And we will also then have the recording linked to the um, web page sometime tomorrow morning as well so that people can immediately see, um, see the presentation from this evening. And I do thank those for providing us input um, throughout the process and, and can encourage you to continue to do so. Um, as parents probably well know, November 7th and um, the afternoon of November 10th are um, parents' teacher conference days. So I encourage our parents to please schedule conferences with our teachers will be available for you throughout that time period um, so that you can get some more information about your students and any questions that you have for your parents. And I also want to recognize in the audience this evening, we have Gwen Lee, who is our military liaison um, to Langley Air Force Base and Fort Eustis. And it's sort of ironic that you were here the day that we were talking about impact aid. So um, she's always been very helpful with us when we've wanted to do joint projects um, with anybody or anything related to the military. And certainly as we continue to um, take advantage of our uh, DODEA grants, um, they've been very helpful. So Gwen, thanks. It's great to see you tonight. And we look forward to continuing to work with you. Thank you. Mr. Brown. At the primary school, the preschool <coughs> continue to sharpen their pre-literacy skills with a field trip to the Pocosin City Public Library, where they enjoyed story time with Miss Marty. The first grade students all enjoyed a field trip to Yorktown, where they learned about life in the colonial times. They experienced firsthand a colonial kitchen by grinding corn and making corn cake. The students loved the corn cake. Second graders visited Hampton Air and Space Museum in conjunction with Space National Space Week. Students toured the museum and viewed an IMAX movie. Their trip was partially funded by the Division STEM grant. The kindergartens are planning a trip to the pumpkin patch next week as an activity for their life cycle unit. On this trip, kindergartens will have an opportunity to pick out their own pumpkin just in time for Halloween. At the elementary school, students have released more than 30 monarch butterflies so far this fall. There are many more to be released in the following weeks. On October 2nd, the student staff kicked off the No Bullying Month with a pep rally where the drum line and the cheerleaders got everyone psyched to keep out bullying. The PES Bulls Don't Bully Spirit Club has also prepared a video talking about what bullying is and what students can do about it if it occurs. On the 10th, the fifth graders were visited by a NASA educational specialist who told them about astronaut food, the clothing, and what it's like to be an astronaut in space. Next week, on October 26th, the PPS and the PES PTO 
will host Trunk or Treat in the PS parking lot from 6 to 7.30. We hope to see you there. At the middle school, in order to recognize World Space Week, a JLab representative came and conducted a hands-on activity with the 6th graders in science. Students made models to examine the relative size and distance of planets from the sun. Students did metric conversions and they worked in groups to measure distances and to, and to determine which objects best represented the planet being described along with their placement in the solar system. Our school counselors have been busy completing classroom lessons for all the students. Our eighth grade students participated in a lesson entitled Portrait of a Graduate, following the introduction of four key components of Portrait of a Gra Graduate framework students worked in teams to categorize provided examples as either content knowledge, workspace skills, civic responsibility, and community engagement, and career exploration. Eighth graders were also introduced to the main components of academic and career plans in, prepar in preparation for high school, courses, registration in February, and individual academic and career plan meetings in May 2018. Seventh grade students participated in a lesson entitled Glittery Gossip. Students were asked to define gossip and then were presented with the challenge involving, involving on all to participate. <coughs> students learned just like gossip can be intriguing at first, but once it's spread, it's almost impossible to clean up. The sixth grade students participated in a lesson entitled Making the Most of Middle School. In this lesson, students had an opportunity to brainstorm what they liked most about middle school and identify areas of the middle school life that were still presenting a challenge. Students were then treated to a tips for success video composed of veteran middle schoolers sharing recommendations on topics ranging from homework tips to the importance of extracurricular activities and maintaining positive friendships. The Pocosa Middle School will celebrate Red Ribbon Week October 23rd through the 27th through drug prevention education and by participating in school spirit days that are designed to promote a drug-free school. This year's themes will be, your future is key, so stay drug-free. Pocosum High School is charging ahead with a lot of exciting events happening both in and out of the classrooms. October has started off with a fabulous bullying prevention week. The second week of October, we continue to bring our students and community together as we honor the rich Pocosin High School homecoming traditions. Thanks to the tremendous coordination of our student leaders and faculty, the homecoming festivities were a success with spirit days, hall decorating, and a spirited parade and dance. Academically, our students participated in the dynamic project-based learning experience facilitated by Ms. Morrison that allowed 11th grade students to interview and learn from the experience of our local war veterans which was highlighted in numerous local media outlets. Our earth science classes hosted a mini science fair to emphasize the importance of scientific investigation and experimental design. While our astronomy courses received a visit from a representative from the Back Bay Amateur Astron Astronomers. Our counseling department has been active as they facilitated the PSAT for all 10th grade students and interested 9th and 11th grade students. They also held a Teach senior parent night to provide information about post-secondary options. Our PHS community is celebrating the <coughs> PHS ball team, which placed second in the two-way tournament among the success of fall seasons are underway for our sports and activities. We thank all of our families who participated in last night's family conference night, and we look forward to having more opportunities to engage our families throughout the year. Great report. Thank you very much. Mr. Holcomb. No comment tonight, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ms. Mosteller. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first, I'd like to congratulate all the students and staff that were recognized tonight, as well as those that um, presented. Um, I really hope that they schedule more of the mystery hangouts. I feel like that would have been a lot of fun and also helps the students master their U.S. geographical, excuse me, geographical, oh, I can't get it out tonight, skills. Um, on a more serious note, um, I want to thank Terry for coming tonight um, and speaking. Bullying is a serious offense and it should not in any way be tolerated. Um, it's our job to make sure we're educating our students and providing them a safe haven, um, a safe place to learn, and we should all do our part to make sure that there is zero tolerance for bullying our students. Thank you. 
Ms. Helsel. What she said, and also thank you for coming and speaking. We rarely get parents or anybody to come in here, and, and it's very much appreciated. Because that's how we learn about things, so thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you very much for coming in. I really do appreciate it. We are very concerned about this. I had two uh, children who went through the school system, and... Um, There. It's just very hard to be on the spot when it happens. Very concerned about it. Thank you very much. Ms. Whitaker. Oh, you know I have something to say. Um, thank you for coming tonight. This has been something I have brought up more meetings than I care to count. I don't know how to fix it. I honestly don't. Uh, we can't have a dialogue right here, unfortunately. But um, hopefully we can after this meeting, another day perhaps. Um, the only thing I would like to say, we can only talk about it so much by doing, having, you know, the kids and the school and all that. But the ones who actually do something. I right. work for the DOD, and we have to go through training every year. There, you know, there are laws, and, and I'm not saying that everything's perfect, but there are laws in the workplace against the hostile work environment. Um, I. There should be laws that we can apply in this type of situation. I don't know what the solution is. I don't know if it's the definition of bullying. <coughs> I don't know if it's what the schools are allowed to do. I don't know if it's that people really aren't reporting it when they should be, and I mean the students. Um, you know, but there is a problem, and it is something. The students, the staff, the educators. I, well, I agree, and I have brought this up. I think it was the meeting before last. Um, this is my last year on the school board, and I just want you to know I'm going to keep working, doing what I can do, and I have warned everybody up here that they will not stop hearing from me upon my last meeting next June. I'm not letting this drop. I have a student in middle school. I am very serious about this issue, um, and if we have to go to Richmond, we go to Richmond. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. <clears throat> Thank you all very much. Um, I would like to... Uh, Terry, thank you for being here tonight. I, uh, when you were up, I told you that, but I want you to know that I really appreciate you standing up tonight. Um, I'd like to commend um, one of our school board members who could not be here tonight, Jeremy Jordan, who is receiving the 40 Under 40 Business Leader Award, and it was a very good excuse not to be here, and I'd like to congratulate him. And Gwen, I want you to know how much we appreciate you and everything that you do uh, for that connection between our our military community and how much we appreciate uh, the sacrifice and service of those folks and you make it a special place by being part of us thank you and that's all of my comments do we have any material for board review you do not tonight as dr. Parrish said earlier in her comments that we will be um, adjourning to a work session Two of the topics during work session are school consolidation and also instructional data and with that, we will adjourn. <laughs>